I wanted to share with you how I began journaling, and it wasn't in a Bible. I did my creative Bible journaling in a sketchbook because, first of all, I just felt so reverent towards the Bible. I didn't want to cover any of the scripture. And now I've kind of continued with it because it gives me so much room to illustrate the scriptures and respond to them, whereas the Bible... I can only do uh, maybe a, a few verses on any one page, and then I all the other verses I have no room to journal. So anyway, I began with a word study, and my first word was able, and I took that word and I looked up every instance of it in my Bible, and I wrote out the verses that I found illustrating um, what God is able to do. And I put them in context and kind of summarized them underneath each one and found that God is able to deliver me, humble the proud, to heal, to give me words of wisdom, to defend and fight for me, establish me, to bless me abundantly for good works, to do immeasurably more than I ask or imagine, to guard my trust, make me wise, help me resist temptation, to save, to keep me from falling, make me faultless, and open the scroll in the seven seals. So I took all that, and you might notice that it took me all through the Bible. Daniel, Matthew, Luke, Acts, Romans, Hebrews, um, Revelation. So it just bounced me all over the Bible. I'm getting to know my Bible and putting verses in context and then summarizing them. And I use Luke 21, 15 with the summary picture that I drew. And it says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to stand, to withstand or contradict. So God is able to do that for me. And I loved learning on that. So the next word I chose was abounding. I created two illustrations to summarize what I learned about God's mercy. And the first one represents a conversation between Moses and God that took place in uh, Exodus 33. It wraps up with Moses saying, now show me your glory. And the Lord says, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. But you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. I just love the mercy and the gentleness and the love that God showed in his conversation with Moses. The other... Um, Illustration reminds me of God's love, his patience, and his forgiveness because God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn the people there to turn from their wickedness. Instead, Jonah jumps on a ship headed in the opposite direction, and that led to him being swallowed by a huge fish and praying inside the fish that God would rescue him. God does respond, and he causes the fish to vomit Jonah onto dry land. When God told him to go to Nineveh again, this time he went, he listened to him, and God forgave the people rather than destroying them. Jonah 4 says that Jonah thought that seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Well, I am so touched by God's mercy, not only for the people of Nineveh, but also for Jonah, in spite of his bitter spirit towards the people that God loved and his brazen attitude with God. I just think that just shows us some insight into who God is. He is our loving Father, abounding in love and compassion. My next word was splendor. And I wrote out the verses and illustrated the splendor of the Lord, his creation, his majesty for everything in heaven and earth is his. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. So I use those to point out a summary of it all. Then I was inspired to journal something that wasn't part of my word search. And you can see I'm starting to play with some lettering and trying to get a little more creative in um, 
what I'm journaling. And then my next word was tree. And this time I did an illustration up front and just looking at things and doing tutorials on how to draw, how to sketch and adding some color. And then all this creativity, I wrote my keyword right in the middle of the verses as I looked up every word I could find that contained the word tree. And then another um, break here in my um, actual word study, I was inspired to um, write out Ruth 3.11, which says, all my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of no noble character. And this is from the story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz, and I just thought, how beautiful to have a reputation like that because of your um, bearing the fruit of God's spirit and being a godly woman. And my next word was character, and I varied the layout a little bit, kind of um, showing little illustrations here and there and starting using different lettering, fonts, that sort of thing. My next word was rock, and of course, Jesus is my rock, and to take that verse and do some journaling on it, really starting to work with different lettering techniques, Googling beautiful fonts and different things to try, and highlighting my key word as I found it in the verse, and a second illustration. Then I got to the word joy, and I just feel like the word joy really released creativity. I started to write out the words, uh, the verses again. There were so many of them and some of them are so beautiful. And I just started, whenever I was inspired to um, take the time to write out the verses, I was doing it, maybe illustrate it like this one is in a pillowcase. And it says, for the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. So I did this one in a pillow. The Lord is my strength and my shield, using a shield. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. So I used a little uh, lamp there. Um, and then just trying different things as I'm expressing the word joy writing uh, the names of God, the character of God in tiny letters, spelling out the word Jesus here, and some little borders here and there. And so, uh, still doing the word joy and grouping some verses together and then doing a full page for others, different fonts. This one, just writing it out and little dots next to the letters on the downstrokes, varying the layout. And then my next word was enough. And you can see that once I get to a new word, I try to announce it with some sort of title page or make it stand out. And this was all about God is enough. The he is what I should rely on and put my faith in and my trust in. And so I journaled the word enough and put those words down. I was disappointed here because I had this whole look going on and I accidentally had a ruler that I was lining things up on and I accidentally crossed the middle circle twice with an X. But those are things that I remember journaling this, trying to make it beautiful and honor God's word. And then every once in a while, I would put my word down. So I would, uh, as I'm looking through it now, I can see the verses are surrounding the word enough. And I can't tell you how many times I look back on knowing the words that I've journaled and look for verses that relate to that because of something else I'm doing. Like here's our boundary that um, Lord is my portion, my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I keep my eyes on the Lord with him at my right hand. I will not be shaken. And more on the word boundary. And then my first really big long word was truth. I journaled every instance of the word truth. And I switched from using my concordance in my old Bible to an online app. Um, I use Bible Gateway. And you can actually type in your word 
which translation in the Bible you want to use, and it'll bring up every instance of that word. It'll tell you how many times you're going to be journaling and give you every single reference. So um, things that are hand to, hard to draw, like hands, I can find a picture and trace them. Whatever I needed to do after spending time sitting in the verse and considering how I would want to illustrate it, praying about it, give it some thought, and then um, going and finding any piece of art that I wasn't able to draw so that I could illustrate it the way I felt inspired to illustrate it. Still working on truth for quite a while and doing different outlays for it. And just trying to go with the theme of the verse, the, um, <clears throat> the feeling of the verse, the color of the verse, and just trying to bring it all together to honor the word and just spend that time in quiet worship with God. Still on the word truth. I love this one. Um, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that the people are without excuse. I love that God makes himself so evident. This is more of the word truth. Every once in a while, I'd include a quote or something that I had read, a saying, your beliefs don't make you a better person, your behavior does. Actions speak louder than words. Practice what you preach. And again, I'm still on the word truth. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 13, um, the chapter on love. And I used a two-page spread for that one. Truth of the gospel. Oh, this is being um, a hypocrite here. I used an illustration for that verse. This is a beautiful verse to me. I um, It can get me really choked up, but I am not ashamed of the gospel I found for so long. I lived like this compartmentalized faith where I was a Christian at church and then I went back to my other life the rest of the week. And it's not that I was being a horrible sinner. I was not living for God, though. I didn't give him much thought during the week, and um, it, he wasn't my priority. And I also wasn't speaking about him. I wasn't being his witness. So when I made that switch, I I I did this. I like I tagged a wall as a um, with spray paint. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I love Jesus. I love God's word. I believe it. And so I made this proud declaration there. Uh, included in Christ, sealed in him. Beautiful. These are all just great reminders. The fullness of Christ. Oh, and people that bury their heads in the sand. Like, like that previous version, verse said, God has made himself evident. And so hardening hearts, burying heads in the sand, that's how you avoid believing in Jesus, believing the truth of the gospel. And for you, once you were once in darkness, but now you're in the light. And we are children of the light, the fruit of the light. And that consists in doing all goodness, righteousness, and truth and finding out what pleases the Lord. And I'm still in the word truth. There's a lot of instances of that in the Bible because it is our rock and our truth. A, sh a wolf in sheep's clothing here. I found that image online. Uh, 
And I didn't skip those verses that are a little dark and they're not upbeat and Pinterest worthy so much. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's a great warning and a reminder. And this one too, we have much to say about this, meaning the gospel, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. And I did this picture of this infant sucking on a bottle to demonstrate that. And I'll tell you, Doing a word study through the Bible and spending this time creating in God's word has brought me so much spiritual maturity, wisdom, knowledge um, of God and precious time worshiping him. This was a little mistake. I had finished this entry. I was so pleased with how these little sheep felt turned out and um, then this one I did with a piece of string dipped in red paint and laid it on the page and you close the page and pull the string through and it creates random designs. Well I kind of forgot to cover this page to protect it and luckily it didn't get on my little sheep there. Trying different layouts and fonts. Um, this is people that um, twist the word of God, but there were also false prophets among the people. As, just as there were false teachers among you, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into dispute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Truth written out to look like peacock feathers. Lots of time in God's word, just loving it. The Ten Commandments, I added these because I'm doing a journaling on truth and that is the Ten Commandments. That's our creator's instruction manual for us. And <clears throat> I, I had finished the word truth and so this was something between the word truth and my next word, which was sacred. And I also included the words to the song how great thou art, just awestruck by it and um, so touched every time I sing it. So that's the first few words in my journal and how I got started and I'll share more later.